Hello everybody, welcome back to another session of The Hoppery. My name is Mark Starr, and this week we're going to be focusing on raspberries. Now, you know, when I'm trying to come up with a, you know, a focus for a week, um, I really have to kind of take a look at my beers and be creative. Um, you know, last week we did the Hops Week, uh, the week before that I think we did the Smoked Beer Series, um, and then before that we did the Low ABV Series. Um, so I went back to my collection and just started kind of digging around, seeing what kind of beers I had. Um, and I noticed a trend that I had several beers that had raspberry in them. Now, what's going to make this week unique, though, is that not all three of them are just raspberry-flavored beers. They're different styles of beer. So what I've got lined up for you today, uh, which is Monday, is the Cantillon Rosé de, de Gambrinus. Sorry. Um, this is brewed by Cantillon. Um, it is a creek style lambic. Um, they say that it's actually brewed in the same way that their creek is, um, but rather this one is brewed with raspberries instead of sour cherries uh, that they normally brew in their creeks. Um, it's also aged, so um, you know it's, it says that right here on the bottle it's a blended lambic brewed with raspberries. So. Um, the reason why they call it the Rosé de Gambrinus is that, uh, you know, they really kind of wanted to distance themselves uh, from the other raspberry beers out there um, that really kind of focused on, you know, sweet, syrupy raspberry flavor. Um, so I'm imagining from what I, you know, understand of Lambics uh, that this one will have a raspberry essence, but uh, really be more of a sour beer. So um, anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and... Uh, get it poured in the glass and see what we got. Now this is the first time I've ever had this, so... And you can see it's a really beautiful raspberry color right off the bat. There's no mistaking that um, this is a raspberry beer. Really love the way this one looks. I mean that's... I think this would be a really good Valentine's Day beer, which obviously we're past, but um, you know, just looking at the color right off the bat, very, very nice, warm, raspberry ruby red color. Um, the head on it's really soft. Um, it's a very light soft pink color. Um, not a ton of head I guess. Um, you know with these kinds of glasses uh, the less you pour the less head you're gonna get. If I were to continue pouring about the time it starts to curve up um, I probably would see you know the head it start to expand up but um, lots of bubbles going on in here in the glass. Not sure if you can see that or not. But Well, it's definitely got some funk, so that's a good sign. I do get the raspberry, but it's really a subdued raspberry aroma. It's not right out into, you know, like Lindemann's or something like that where you smell it, and it almost smells like cherry cough syrup or raspberry cough syrup, um, you know, where the um, fruit is really out in the forefront. This is more subdued, so... Um, and what I find to be interesting as well is that they brew it with raspberries and, and I can't imagine how many raspberries they must put in here uh, to get this beer to be this color, but I would imagine it's probably quite a lot. So, I mean, it definitely has that signature smell that you get from Cantillon. So it's got that, you know, that Lambic Creek Goose sort of funk going on or, you know, like the horse blanket. And I, I don't really, actually not even horse blanket on this one. This one's more um, just straight up funk. And you know, funk is really what you want out of a Cantillon beer, so that's exactly what we're getting. So again, on the nose, very kind of straightforward, light raspberry aroma um, met with just a lot of funk. So smells about exactly like I thought it would. Um, let's go in and give it a taste and see if that lives up as well. Yeah, I mean, this pretty much tastes exactly like you think it would. I'm getting a lot of sourness right up front. Um, definitely getting the funk qualities that you would get out of a Cantillon beer. Um, and then there's just a very small amount of raspberry in there. Um, and you can tell there's no sweetness whatsoever. They haven't added any sugar um, or anything to that. Now, when you eat raspberries, they're usually fairly tart. Um, and you have to, you know, sometimes add sugar to them. 
uh, just to kind of take away some of that um, tartness. But, you know, really, there's none of that going on in here. This is, this is lambic through and through. And even as it's starting to warm up, and, you know, I, know I, I talk about this on every beer that I review, but, um, you know, drinking these at the right temperature is very important. Um, they say that you should cellar these at 50 to 55 degrees. Um, my basement doesn't get that cold, and I usually don't keep everything in the refrigerator either. So uh, typically what I'll have to do is just take this off of my shelf, put it in the refrigerator for about a half an hour, 45 minutes. Excuse me. And that usually brings it down to a, you know, a, a cool temperature, because that's really how you want to drink these beers. You want them to be cool, but you don't want them to be cold. You want them to be cool like Fonzie. If you're into tart sours, if you're into um, the funkiness of a Cantillon beer, I, I really don't see why you wouldn't like um, this offering. It does have one of the most unique beer labels that I've seen as well. Uh, it was one of the things that drew me to buying it, in fact. Um, anyway, I just, <laughs> I really like the bottle. I like the label. Hell, I like Cantillon. They make a really good product. They're very consistent. Um, these beers, even though this one clocks in right at 5%, they're very good for aging. So you can put this one down in your basement. Uh, you know, when you go to the liquor store, have them put, you know, ask for a box, you know, one of those wine boxes. Put these in those wine boxes, close the lid, and set them down in your dark basement. Um, and these things will live for a good long time. Um, in fact, I just picked these up, and I noticed right here as I was speaking um, that this one was bottled on January 20th of this year, 2010. So this is a pretty recent um, release. And I did read on their website that when you first buy these, um, that's when the raspberry quality is going to be at the forefront the most. And then as these sit and get older, um, they will start to lose some of that and the lambic, the tartness and the funkiness will really start to take over. So I will say it's one of the most beautiful beers I've ever seen in terms of color. Um, you know, that nice soft um, light pink head on it. Very, very nice. So, well anyway, I've really enjoyed this session. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sit here and finish this glass. Um, I think probably on Wednesday um, I'll come back and we will do the new Glarus Raspberry Tart, um, which will kind of take us in a opposite direction. That beer is very raspberry focused. It tastes like raspberry. It's a fruit beer as opposed to a lambic. So there's really no sour in that one. And then what do we got on Friday? I think I've got the Kunin Raspberry Ice Bock from 2007 lined up. Uh, that comes in a little great seven ounce bottle and um, Anyway, that'll continue on with the raspberry theme. So anyway, hope this is something you guys are interested in. Leave me a comment. Let me know if there's any raspberry beers that you particularly like, because I like them. And if I don't have it, I'll go out and try to find it. Um, you'll also notice this week I included as my vase uh, the Dogfish Head Fort, uh, which is also brewed with raspberries. I don't have any of this one, but this one is a, I think it's 18%. You can see the size of that bottle. It's almost as big as me. If you drink one of those by yourself, it will flat put you out. Except Tim, he's the man. But anyway, guys, my name is Mark Starr. Thanks a lot for coming back to the Hoppery. We'll see you later. Cheers.